So let's get a look at the uh, camshaft position sensor today. Uh, distinctly different from the crank sensor. Um, you can see we have an analog uh, on the crank and clearly this is more of a digital um, type waveform. Uh, either pulled the ground or five volts, right? So we'll take a look at that one. You drawing. recall we had an issue with the amplitude on the uh, crank uh, position sensor from last week. We'll see if we can make a comparison and see if we can rationalize what's going on there. I have no idea. Okay. We'll see. So just to orient you a wee bit on the drawing here, guys, again, here's the two sensors. That's the crank sensor we looked at last week. Uh, this is, in fact, the uh, cam position sensor. It's a Hall effect sensor. It is three wire, a ground. A five volt reference see the little uh, white circle there and on the drawing the legend tells you the white circle reference it's five volts and it's being toggled to and from ground via the uh, change in magnetic coupling of the uh, hall effect sensor which also has a 12 volt supply so we'll look at all three of those oh this is a bit of a simplified drawing with respect to the supply but i can uh, take my word for it it comes from the main relay um, when the ignition is actually turned on, uh, one of the relays that feeds the uh, ECM itself, uh, this line is tapped off of, off of here with respect to the B+. Okay, well, that's a pretty decent waveform. Let me just hold that right there. I've got it frozen. Let me shut the car off so you can get it. Oh, that's better. Too much racket with the uh, engine actually running. This one's got a wee bit of an exhaust leak, so it's quite loud. Okay, so here you can see I've got um, I've got it obviously paused here, guys, just so we can freeze the uh, data so we don't have the pulse train actually walking. Uh, I've got the uh, cursor set just so that it can minimize the amount of walk. And as I said, I've frozen it on this freeze frame here for a reason, because this actually captures um, cylinders one, three, four, and two. That's the firing order at, at top dead center, right? So um, uh, this is a Hall effect sensor, so it isn't um, an analog type uh, waveform. It's obviously uh, more like a pulse strain, a digital waveform, if you will, strictly uh, toggling between uh, near ground and uh, the 5 volt um, uh, reference which comes from within the ECM. There's a 12 volt reference actually supplied to the crank position sensor, which is actually right there. So there's a, a ground uh, 12 volt uh, supply and a 5 volt uh, reference which is toggled uh, to and from ground in order to give us this waveform. I'll show you that on the uh, drawing shortly. Uh, I can't get the exact um, time base that the manual actually uh, refers us to because uh, I simply don't have that option, but it's fairly close. You can see here on the min-max values, uh, just below ground because of some of the noise and uh, just above 5 volts. So this measurement can obviously be taken from the ECM, where I actually am. Again, I'll show you that on the drawing, or straight from here. Okay, so just a couple of points of interest here, guys. Um, I've got the car, actually, the key off at the moment, and uh, you can see um, that our crank output signal is showing zero. Why is it showing zero? Because the main relay is actually open, and the power from the ECM is actually pulled at this moment. So let me put the key on here, so just note that position right there. So now the main relay is providing power to the ECM. Don't know if you can hear the tone coming from the throttle actuator. See how that voltage has stepped up a wee bit? So let me just turn the ignition off.
There's the ignition off. I think there's a five or 10 second cutout. Don't know if you can hear that. You can certainly hear the traffic going by. Just keep an eye. I can hear the throttle actuator still. And it just cut out and you can see it dropped to zero. Okay, so again, this is a Hall Effect type sensor. There's a 12 volt supply, there's a five volt reference that's pulled to ground, and there is um, a ground. You won't necessarily see five volts. It depends exactly where the cam actually stops. So as the uh, trigger wheel of the cam, which is located somewhere near the sensor obviously, rotates, there's teeth upon it, depending on where it stops, may or may not get the five volts clearly we're not getting the five volts with the engine stopped in the current position let me rotate the engine a wee bit and we might get an, a different position on the rotor we might get a next to your tooth in which case we'll get the five volt reference Yeah, there we go. So I caught it that time. So you can see we're nearly at five volts. And again, when the main relay opens, I'm not sure if you can hear that. It should drop to zero. And there it goes. I'm not sure if you can hear the relay click. I can. You guys may not be able to hear that. Okay, just pinning out each individual wire at the uh, Hall Effect sensor itself. So we'll turn on the ignition. You should see that jump up to 12 volts and it does in fact jump up to 12 volts so again just to make the point let me turn the ignition off and I think it's about a 20 second delay I'll speed this up for you guys And of course the main relay has timed it now. Okay, and finally the ground. And uh, again, I'll show you all this on the wiring diagram. That's the black and orange wire as opposed to the black and red. The connector there. That's right down at zero, right? So uh, the argument could be made, and it's a sensible one, well, how do I know that's not just open? Because if I take this off, let me take the probe right off and just have an open, open circuit. You see we've got a bit of noise there now as opposed to the zero, but it's still near zero, right? So there it's back on at zero. Matt Mechanic taught me a wee trick sometime back. Um, let me change the scale here. Go to 50 volts just so I can offset the, the scale. So I'm gonna go from ground, ground reference on 12 volts. And you can see we've dropped down the 12 volts negative now does that make sense so it is in fact a sensible ground i hope that makes sense and again if it was open circuit it would just go to zero right so there i've got the probe actually out it's floating at zero that's clearly not a good ground i hope that makes sense guys okay cam and crank um Obviously the uh, the cam is on the uh, channel one, the yellow there guys, the digital signal and the analog is the, uh, the crank. Uh, this is going to be a bit worried now because clearly the amplitude of this crank sensor output is way higher. Um, this is going to be a bit worried now. Let me uh, shut the engine off so we can uh, discuss this. 
Okay, so just taking a look at the uh, data and freeze frame format here. As I said, um, this has got me a bit worried here now because you can see just the idle. Um, and again, this amplitude is is a rotational speed dependent, RPM dependent. Um, I have, what, like eight volts peak to peak there. Now you can see minus five to plus five on the crank. Uh, <laughs> This is going to be worried now because the the other car the, the crank was a fraction of this but uh anyway we'll take a look at that at the end of the video maybe uh, maybe i had some uh, uh denny uh formerly the logical connect currently uh gadgets playlist said that maybe my pins were actually shorting something within i don't think so but that's a distinct possibility i don't want to dismiss that and it was dragging down the signal that's a real possibility so of course right on cue the neighbor's dog is barking right anyway a closer look at the uh, trace here guys again the uh, cam sensor uh hall effect sensor of zero to five volts and given as the uh, top dead center references for cylinders one three four and two and uh, a healthy uh, crankshaft sensor signal um, analog sensor of course variable reluctance if you will and it's a 36 minus 6 they call it. I guess there's 6 notches missing and that gives us the indexation points on the uh, crankshaft here. So appreciate guys that this would be, if this is a reference point here, uh, this would be 180 degrees of rotation and an additional 180 degrees or a full rotation and then an additional 180 and an additional 360 from here to here or 720 for two full rotations of the crank because of the gearing of course on the cam that would translate to one full rotation on the crankshaft on the camshaft. So I hope that makes sense, guys. This is not really about cam and crank relationship, but kind of makes sense. Some of you guys are new to this. I'm fairly new to it myself. I don't want to kid anybody, um, but it's quite a good image for making that clear distinction of the correlation. Okay, let's roll in the other SX4 and see if we can scope that crank sensor again and uh, see what the story is, because uh, I must have done something wrong last week. Oh, this is a mystery. So back to my other car. Check out the peak to peak values on the crank sensor on this one. And there is only the single pin the probe on the ground. So there's definitely no shorting on it. Huh. That is a bit a tenth of what it is on the other car. But yet the signal's clear, so I wonder. If for whatever reason, sorry about that. Here's the crank sensor. You can see it actually internally in the ECM itself. It actually goes across this dropping resistor. Did they change this between years? Is that possible? I guess anything's possible. But that's not what the manual says, is it? So, the mystery continues. Well, I guess that's it for now, boys. Cheers. So in light of recent events, here's a picture of Queen Elizabeth. She's stepping on uh, Air Canada. I think it's a DC-8, and I think it's from early 70s, judging by her relative youth. That's it, boys. Cheers.